Good morning, I am Samuel. I am from Singapore and I signed up for the Rescue First Steps U19 Challenge. This is the second year I am involved in robotics. In fulfilling this task, I solved problems related to object avoidance, pathfinding, and localization. Let us begin with the strategy. We start off with steering. To steer the robot, we set the speed of both the left and right wheels. When both wheels are set to forward, the robot will move straight. When the left wheel is set at a higher speed than the right wheel, the robot turns to the right, and vice versa. Maximum rotation can be obtained by setting the wheels to rotate in opposite directions. In this case, the robot will turn on the spot. Differential steering allows us to combine two separate actions, turning and moving into one. Thus, we don't have to consider separate pieces for each. The gyro sensor and the position data are used to determine the required movement of the robot. We can obtain the bearing of the robot using the gyro sensor. We can also calculate the direction vector from the robot's current position to a target position. Then, we will steer the robot such that it rotates towards a targeting vector. This is the targeting steer. We also need to incorporate steering to avoid obstacles in the robot's path. How quickly the robot steers away from walls and obstacles should depend on the proximity between the robot and the closest wall. We set the wall steer term to be negatively related to the smallest ultrasound reading. The direction of turning depends on whether the left ultrasound sensor or right ultrasound sensor is closer to the wall. We combine wall steer and targeting steer using a weighted average. When the robot is very near a wall, the wall steer is large as the priority is to move away from the wall to not collide with it. Otherwise, when the robot is far from the wall, the priority is to move closer to the target grid so the targeting steer will be large. To deposit the objects, both of the RGB sensors must be within the orange deposit zone. If it happens that only one sensor detects orange, the robot will turn until both sensors are within the orange zone. The RGB sensors are also used to detect the blue special zone and the yellow trap warning zones. The robot steers to avoid the trap whenever one of the RGB sensors detects yellow. If the right sensor detects yellow, it will steer towards the left and vice versa for when the left sensor detects yellow. When both sensors detect yellow, the direction to steer depends on which side of the robot is closer to the wall. Now, we move on to our strategy for deciding where to go. We prioritize collecting the red cyan black color set since each set gives us 90 additional points. To do so, we look at what colors have been collected. Then, we only search the boxes with colors we are missing. Once the robot is full, we go to the deposit zone. This process is repeated until the game ends. To make the search more efficient, the time taken to turn towards and travel to a target grid should be minimized. Furthermore, some grids may be filled with more objects than others. So for the few remaining grids that contain a color of interest, they should be ranked according to factors like distance from the current grid, angle needed to turn to face that grid, density of objects in the grid, and the presence of traps which will slow the robot down. A scoring system is set up to rank each grid, with different weights given to each factor. Weights vary dif uh, across different maps as they are optimized to get the highest score for a specific map. Finally, we will discuss robot localization. Currently, the server only tells us which of the nine grids a robot is in. Such crude positioning limits the efficiency of search and pathfinding. For example, in this case, knowing which grid the robot is in and which grid the deposit zone is in only tells us the general direction to head towards. After reaching the target grid, the robot may still have to search for the deposit zone. However, if we know which part of the grid the robot is in and which part of the grid the deposit zone is in, we can form a more direct and shorter path. Furthermore, knowing the precise position of the robot can tell us which part of the target grid has been searched. This allows us to prioritize the parts that have not been searched, which have a higher prob probability of containing objects. This makes the search more efficient. The idea will be to use landmarks in the map and the three ultrasound sensors to triangulate the position of the robot in a grid. First, we mask out pixels belonging to walls from an image of the map. Then, given the position and bearing of the robot, we can determine the expected ultrasound values by computing the shortest pixel distance to a wall. After that, we compute this pixel distance for each position on the map for each bearing. The image has been scaled so that the pixel distance at each point corresponds to the expected ultrasound value at that point in the map. As this operation is computationally expensive, we only consider 90 positions each for the horizontal and vertical directions. This plot was generated for a compass reading of 135 degrees. 360 of such plots were generated for each possible gyro sensor value. Next, the sensor values must be calibrated such that they have the same reference point. 
Let f be the front ultrasound value, s be the side ultrasound value, a be the distance from the front ultrasound sensor to the reference point, and b the distance from the side ultrasound sensor to the reference point. We record the front and side ultrasound readings in the following two cases by moving the robot manually using the control panel in the simulator. The variables are related by the equations below each case. Plotting f against s for each case, we have two equations for a and b in terms of the y-intercepts of the best fit lines. This allows us to obtain the values of a and b. By doing so, we have calibrated our ultrasound sensors to have the same reference point. Then, we can use the ultrasound sensors a and b as well as the bearing of the robot to determine the robot's precise location from our distance maps. For example, suppose the current bearing of the robot is 135 degrees. We consider the pixel distance plots for 90 degrees, 135 degrees, and 180 degrees for the right, front, and left ultrasound sensors respectively. Suppose a server tells us that the left, front, and center ultrasound values are 31, 45, and 31 respectively. Each ultrasound value and their corresponding distance plots gives us a possible set of possible positions the robot is at. The probable positions of the robot will be the intersection of these three sets. Overlaying the map, we can see that this is accurate as a robot can be at either of these three positions. However, this means that for certain conditions, the robot's position could be indeterminate. Furthermore, the ultrasound values may be the ultrasound sensors may be blocked by another robot in a 1v1 match. This means that the position triangulated by the sensors could be inaccurate too. My approach to solve these problems was to use a filtering algorithm to give a best estimate by considering past and current readings. We start by generating a uniform distribution of particles as possible robot positions. For each particle, we determine the expected ultrasound readings using our distance maps. Then, we calculate a normalized error by comparing these expected readings to the corresponding server readings. After that, we resample and did redistribute the particles such that the positions with lower error have more particles. Finally, we propagate particles in the direction of the robot's motion. We repeat these four steps for each program cycle. Let's see our particle filter in action. We see that although the current ultrasound sensors are possible for these three robot positions, the particle filter gives us a correct position by considering past sensor readings. Now that we achieve more precise localization, we should relook at our feature avoidance model. Currently, we avoid walls by considering the ultrasound readings and avoid traps by considering three different cases. However, this model may not give us the optimal behavior all the time. For this map, the bottom right region is especially problematic. Firstly, at this position, the detection of the warning zone by the right RGB sensor will compel the robot to turn left, while the detection of the wall by the left ultrasound sensor will compel it to turn right. It is not immediately clear to the robot which direction to turn. Secondly, at this position, the current model will compel the robot to turn right to avoid the wall and turn right again to avoid the trap. However, this path is suboptimal as the robot should just make a 135 degree turn right from the start. However, doing so will require the robot knowing the presence of the trap at its starting position without first detecting it. The idea of repulsion maps is to generate position-based steering vectors that repel the robot from traps and walls. First, we mask out the pixels that compose walls and traps. Then, we invert the image and process it by doing a distance transform and taking the gradient of the output. The color bar measures the output of the distance transformation, dxy, which is the shortest distance to a wall or trap. The direction of the arrows gives us a direction of the gradient of dxy which indicates a direction of greatest increase of dxy. As a robot should be repelled away from the features, it makes sense to set the repulsion vector to be parallel to the gradient of dxy. As we only want this vector to be large when the robot is near a feature, we scale this vector to be negatively related to dxy. We can visualize this avoidance vector by plotting a HSV image where hue at a point is proportional to the angle of a vector at a point, and value is proportional to, mag to the magnitude of the vector at that point. Now, considering the repulsion vectors, we see that the two cases raised earlier are neatly resolved. The benefit of repulsion vectors is that we no longer have to consider cases for wall and trap avoidance. In summary, the ultrasound sensors and compass readings are fed into the distance maps and filtering algorithm to give us the best estimate of the robot's position. This precise position data is then fed into our scoring system to determine a target position that optimizes the score and is fed into our repulsion maps for trap and wall avoidance. In general, the robot performs as expected because the position data given by the particle filters is quite accurate. Problems were and st are still being debugged in Python, where we plot the maps out and visualize them. Some of these visualizations are the same ones inserted in this presentation. Score-wise, we also manage to do decently. For future work, we can make the robot movement smoother by finding a better way to incorporate our trap and wall avoidance into our steering. We can also optimize the path instead of just focusing on optimizing the target positions the robot aims toward. 
Through this experience, I managed to apply my skills in computer vision as well as Python and C programming in a practical project. I also learned soft skills like setting and achieving realistic goals and learning different approaches to solving the task from the match videos online. Thank you.